Hi. In this lesson, we'll be seeing how to derive equations of motion. And finally, we'll use this question to understand how to apply these equations in solving questions. And in our subsequent lessons in the week, we'll also solve more questions to understand how to use these equations. Now let's get started. Solving, deriving equations of motion. The first thing I want us to get started with is understanding the concept of velocity, understanding the concept of velocity, distance, and acceleration. Now, if I have to move from two points, take this point to be point A, and I'm moving to point B. Between point A and point B, I would have covered a distance. Now, the distance covered, and also I would have moved from an initial velocity probably to a final velocity. Now, call my initial velocity, I want to call my initial velocity, initial velocity, I want to call it U. And I want to call my final velocity, I want to call my final velocity v. Now the distance I would have covered, let's call it s. Now to move from your initial velocity to a final velocity, you would have been accelerated. So let's call the acceleration e. Now, for me to have moved from point A to point B, I would have covered this distance within a specific time, and we'll call the time so that my acceleration will be given as the rate of change, the rate of change of my velocity over the time taking. That's obviously A is equals to V minus U over T. Now, if A is equals to V minus U over T, and I want to make V the subject of the formula, I can obviously cross multiply so that A will be equals to a t will be equals to v minus u. Now, if a t is equals to v minus u, obviously, my v is equals to u plus a t. I've moved u, I've collected like times, I've moved u to the other side of the equation. Let's call this our first equation of motion, that equation one. Now, Remember that if A is equals to V minus UT, also the average velocity covered in the old, the average velocity is given as, my average velocity is given as, let's call that V bar, is given as V plus U over 2. If average velocity is given as V plus U over T over 2, then the distance covered, my distance covered, is given as average velocity v times c. Average velocity times time c. So that if my distance covered is given as average velocity times time t, then I can conclude that my distance covered is the same thing as v plus u over 2 into now if s is equal to v plus u over 2 remember that from our equation 1 we have deduced that v is equal to u plus a t then we can deduce that s is equal to u plus a t substituting for v plus u over 2 all into t so that s now is equal to u plus u that's 2 u plus a t over 2 all multiplied by t. Now, s now, obviously, s is equals to 2u t into the bracket becomes 2u t plus a t squared all over 2. Now, the old expression becomes, remember I had s is equals to u 2u t plus a t squared over 2. This becomes 2 here is 1, 2 here is 1. U t plus half a t squared. That's my second equation of motion. 
S is equal to U T plus half E T squared. Now let's derive the third equation of motion. Now for our third equation of motion, remember that our distance S is given as average velocity, that's V bar times times T. And our average velocity is given as V bar is equal to U, V plus U over 2. And from our first equation, where we have that V is equal to U plus AT, we have can deduce that our V minus U over A is equal to T. Now I can substitute these two equations, these two equation i'll substitute for v bar which is my average velocity and i'll also substitute for t so that s now will be equals to in place of v bar i have v plus u over 2 into v minus u over e now if i'm expanding this bracket s now will be equals to from our completing the squares v plus u times v minus u will come out from a difference of 2 square. Now, from our difference of 2 square, v plus u into v minus u becomes v squared minus u squared over 2e. Also, in the description below, we'll be leaving a link to our lesson where we taught difference of 2 square. That if s is equal to v squared minus u squared over 2e, my s will be equal to v squared my 2as will be equals to v squared minus u squared. Let's move u squared to the other side. So that 2as plus u squared is equals to v squared. Now we can rewrite it, v squared to be equals to u squared plus 2as. Now this is a third equation of motion. Now let's take the example. Who says a boy on a bicycle accelerated uniformly at 1 meter per second? Now, its acceleration A is the same thing as 1 meter per second squared. It did that for a time of 10 seconds. If you had done that for a time of 10 seconds, that means our T is equal to 10 seconds. And from an initial velocity, it did that to an initial velocity U, which is equal to 4 meters per second. Now, we are asked to calculate the distance traveled in this time. Now we have three equations, and if you look at this question closely, you see that I have acceleration, I have time, and I have an initial velocity u. This reminds me of the second equation of motion, where s is equal to ut plus half a t squared. My s is the distance, is equal to u, my u is the velocity, and my time t is 10 seconds plus half into a, a is the acceleration, accelerated for one meter per second squared, into the time t again, that's 10 squared. So that my s, which is the distance, is four times 10, that's 40, plus half into 100. Two years one, two in 100 is 50. S is equals to 90 meters. Thank you. See you in our next class, where we'll be solving more questions relating to this. Thank you and do have a nice time.